All righty, we are back this week with podcast number 80. Uh, this week we have two guests, both are named Mike Billman. We've got the second and the third. And what kind of led me to wanting to uh, have these guys on the podcast this week is, <clears throat> I don't know, a few months at, uh, back, I saw both of these guys training for really long extended periods of time. And uh, Mike, in fact, I think I, I've seen him training longer than anyone I've ever seen train in the gym. So I started to ask them what they were training for. And it was this uh, Spartan race that we're going to dive into here later. Um, but it really got me to just thinking, this is just, they have a cool story overall. Um, it's a father son duo. Mike's been here for nine years. Um, his son just three months, but you've been here. You've you've dropped in and stuff kind yeah. of throughout the years when you were younger and mm -hmm. things with with your dad. So, <clears throat> and I just think it's it's really awesome. You guys are like kind of bonding over like training together, and uh, and I think another thing that's really cool is I don't know. It was probably four or five years ago. Uh, Mike went through some some pretty nasty like injuries and health ailments that. He, he continued to train and work through them and then, you know, had some surgeries and really persevered through it. And I want to kind of dive into that, too, when, when we get into a story. And it's just it's really incredible because I'm seeing him in here now and he's just thriving and and uh, kicking ass. And I mean, able to pull off eight hour training sessions in the gym to get ready for this crazy race. And and uh, it's just really cool to see what both of them are doing, um, I think. What I'd like to do is is just start off with uh, with the dad, Mike, here, and just kind of tell us um, maybe your sporting background, what you do for a living, and, and kind of just like leading up to starting CrossFit, and then kind of just give us a quick uh, synopsis of like your CrossFit journey here. Okay. So I, uh, as far as like athletic background, I as a as a youngster, I played all the the normal major sports, you know football, baseball, basketball. So did all those, all the, all three of those. And then through high school, did, uh, played baseball, played football, and um, played one year of uh, college football at uh, UD at Dayton. Uh, and uh, only played one year, though, because then I got into other fun things and became more, I wanted to, you know, it's sometimes you, you when you, you're into the sports so much and, and you get that burnout. I, I think I probably got to that burnout. And so I just played one year, but yeah. Um, so then uh, came back from school and, and my, my father had always, always owned his own businesses. And, and uh, so I, I came back from school, got a job, uh, worked for Coca-Cola for a couple of years. And then I worked for my dad uh, with his businesses. He had like, you know, gas stations, and car rental places, and ice cream shops. And oh, he was doing all kinds of, he has hands in a bunch of he's things. A That's mechanic cool. and car, uh, towing cars and all kinds of things. So, so I started working for him and started, uh, you know, learning about how to own your own business. And, um, and then he started to want to retire. And so I started running some of those businesses. And then, uh, and then I, um, and then I started dating my wife, Jackie, and uh, then when we fast forward, we, we um, started our family and uh, and moved. Uh, I grew up on the west side of Columbus and went to Westland High School. And we moved uh, to UA and started our family. And then um, and then we bought a, a, a business on Henderson Road. Uh, we own a, uh, a gas station convenience store. It's a Sunoco right now, uh, Henderson and Durker. So that's uh, what I do now. And so that's what enabled me to start coming to CrossFit during weird times of the day. You know, people are like, what do you do? How are you coming in here at nine 30 in the morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soccer moms and, you know, people that normally, you know, do you have a, do you even have a job? And I'm like, so, so that's how that started. And, um, and then, uh, how I got into CrossFit, um, you know, as the kids got older and I was looking for something to, to kind of, you know, get the juices flowing a little bit. And someone mentioned CrossFit and they're like, Oh, you should do CrossFit. You did all the sports and you seem like the perfect person to do CrossFit. Cause it's very, very competitive. I'm like, what do you mean competitive? And they're like, we well, just look into it. You should, you should try it. So I came in here and I remember coming in 
talking to Dan and Dan walked me through at the old gym. And, and then I started, I remember coming in here and had no clue what I was doing at all. You know, I was a typical dude, just used to, you know, bench press and do a little squat and do some curls. And, and then I just loved, loved uh, the whole CrossFit. Thing. So leading up to that, the 20 years or so, yeah, 15 between, you know, college and CrossFit, mm-hmm. were you, consistently working out and doing some sort no, of training or anything? No, okay. I would do the, you know, I'd, I'd go for a mile run and then maybe hit some weights or something. And, um, you know, that was my, pretty much my, my workout yep. scenario. Yep. 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 Lifetime for a couple of years, um, in between, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. So I would do a little bit, but nothing like this. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah. yeah. So then, um, I think I was, we were talking before, uh, I joined right before, you and Kate got married, and I also remember it, like a mouse, like a week after I started was when Katie Gottro got here because I remember yeah. she, I was in her her first class, and uh, so I always go back and I, so people say how long are you here? I'm like I don't know how long how long's Katie been here? Yeah, uh, or when did Katie start? So yeah, so that's uh, pretty much that journey, and um, and uh, yeah, so then as far as uh, you me talk about injury or anything? Or yeah, so so get into. You know, you were you were working out and training and, and got super fit, and then you started to have some issues with uh, your hips, right? Yeah, so I started getting pain in my hips, and I, you know, I, I, I had that mentality of just working through everything, so I, I didn't even pay attention to it for probably a year or two. And uh, then I started getting in back pain, and then I got leg pain, and uh, that got to the point where I couldn't ignore it anymore. So I don't know what, what I did first. If I went to see um, Jason DePore or if I went to see a chiropractor or what, but I started seeing people. And then I finally did have a x-rays and MRI, and they're like, yeah, you probably need hip surgery. You need a hip replacement. So then I would look into that and talk to people, and, you know, you'd have some people that say, you know, everybody, they probably anybody can go in there probably tell you they need hip replacement. They got a little bit of arthritis. So I took that opinion and and hung on to that for a couple of years like okay I don't need it I'll just work through it yep. and I'll do all the physical therapy and uh you know kind of long story short I, I tell people I went I, I did every single thing that you could possibly do before I got my hips replaced I did the uh I mean I did the, the kneeling I did the physical therapy I did the injections in my hip and my back I just did massage therapy I did uh I mean, the cryotherapy, I tried every single thing, and I saw different physical therapists. I mean, probably five or six uh, therapists, physical therapists around town. And then I finally got to uh, one uh, physical therapist, and they started talking about the uh, whole mind-body thing uh, with, you know, that, you know, sometimes your pain, you know, we've talked about Mm -hmm. it in length before. Your your pain can, a lot of it is, uh, can be, you know, learned pain responses and, and things like that. So I started thinking, oh, man, maybe some of this stuff isn't, you know, all physical and maybe some of it's uh, some mental stuff I can work on. So I worked on that a little bit, and it helped. Um, a lot of a lot of that helped. That can really help, did. like, alleviate uh, the anxiety of it. I know I've had yeah. a lot of issues with chronic pain and things like that where um, a lot of the pain is actually, it's not so much just the pain, it's the anxiety that comes with it because it's ruining all your plans and yep. things that you want to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's, that's even, even when you come out of say your surgery and things like that, having some of those tools that you yeah. probably learned from that can help like just ease your mind and ease like the, the anxiety that comes with like injuries that are lingering and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's pain. There's, there's pain. There's things that happen and you get this, um, get that pain and those are learned and, mm-hmm. and, and then they, they just come back for, for whatever reason. And so you can learn to actually, uh, relax and do things that, and just realize that some of those things are, are not real physical problems. They're, they're memories and things like that. So, so, uh, again, long story short, I, I ended up finally getting, both my hips replaced. It'll it's coming up on a couple of years now that I've had both of them for replacements. So that I'm glad I did it, but I'm also glad that I waited too because I learned a lot about the body and the mind and all that. Um, so, but yeah, uh, got that done, and then it was and then it was re- learning what movements I can do in here and what movements I can't do, and 
And that's really hard, too, because there's not a lot of uh, data on, or probably I don't know if there's any data on people doing, like, CrossFit after hip replacement or races or things like that. You know, mainly they tell you right after you do something like that, it's like, okay, don't do anything. And then you got to push them a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do this and this. Is that okay? Okay, well, then maybe that's okay, but don't do this and that. And then and then you, what I would do is I'd push a little bit more and, and then finally, you, you, you get to a point where you, you just have to take in everything you've learned and they've told you and then kind of figure it out on your own, yeah. which is where I'm at now. But I think Bo Jackson was like, he was the first <clears throat> person, you know, and I was I was a kid when it happened. But, you know, he was he was probably, you know, number two or three biggest sports stars in the world, you know, just under. Michael Jordan, you know, at the time. And, you know, he had a full hip replacement and that was, that was sporting news right then. And, and, and he made a full comeback and and got back to uh, playing major league baseball. And that Mm -hmm. was the first time you saw someone, they, they had never seen anyone come back and now hip replacements have gotten so much better. They were just talking about it on a Joe Rogan episode where, you know, people are getting their hips replaced and they're like, they're getting back to full stuff now. And it's really, it's really cool to see the types of of things that people are getting back to with artificial joints. And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, 20, 30 years down the line, you might actually see people doing it electively the same way people like pitchers are doing it with Tommy John. I can see that. Like when they get really good, because it's going to be superior to like the, the actual joint that's in there. But we don't need or to go down do that stem rabbit cells. Hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I have yeah, a question ahead. for you, Mike. Mm-hmm. Um, what sort of practices did you do to help with like the mind, body, like the the pain that helped alleviate some um, of that pain? Well, there's uh, they have like, and I never would have thought I would ever do anything like this, but they have like meditations that you can listen to, and you can just get in a you know like a a, a quiet place in your mind and, and do meditations. And I would do the ones where they actually recorded and, and listen to those and, and, and breathing while you're doing them is really important. And then, and then also the simple thing of like, just telling yourself that certain pains, uh, certain pain that you have, it, it, it's not from a physical injury. And, and it sounds so weird, but it's so true. And that you can just, I would tell myself, you know, that pain that's shooting down your leg is not from any physical injury. It's just something learned and your brain is firing that for whatever reason. So just keep, keep going and and just, you know, focus on something else. Focus on, you know, if it's from a certain, if I'm doing a certain movement, maybe focus on like, you know, using your, your glutes more or something that that takes the, the, the focus off of that. No, it doesn't sound weird to me. I mean, I think anyone that's like, I've considered myself like an OG, like workout mm-hmm. person. I mean, I've been working out for probably like 35 years. We, we all have experienced some form of that where you have to just say like, yeah, I mean, for whatever reason, I'm anxious right now. And that this is just like my body letting me know, but this is just going to drive this more. Give me something to focus on there when it, maybe I just need to stop like worrying about this other thing or this is a it's a distraction really from like what you probably need to do is just like in generally calm down but mm-hmm. whatever you're focusing on might not be healthy for you and and i think in a lot of you know we were just brandon and i were just talking about this last night like like the the common thread of i mean he's had a lot of affiliate uh owners say that they suffer from a lot of the pain um, chronic pain feedback and, um, business owners, business it's owners, really yeah. big and, <clears throat> and it's not even necessarily from like, like our work days are unconventional in the way that like, we're not necessarily just putting in like a straight through 12 hour work day, mm-hmm. but it's sort of the weight of it and it's constant and it's always there. Yeah. It's always yeah. there. And so these are like very common issues with, um, business owners, um, the, the Howard Schubner meditations, I still do them um, almost every day, honestly. And uh, that's going to be a podcast in the future where I'm just going to dive straight into all of that stuff and, and just hammer it. And, and I think it'll resonate with some people. But yeah, I mean, to Kate's point, um, I was just 
reading like these posts in the CrossFit affiliate board where it's basically 12,000 guys who are, you know, have the same job as me and they run into these issues mm-hmm. all the time. And then, you know, they're talking about it. So, um, no, it doesn't sound crazy. Yeah, it's and not, I think it's if not, anyone's it's like, honest, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, and, yeah. And, and if you're just a hard, like, that just successful hard driver and you've been working out for years, I think that's it yeah. too, you it, know? Yeah, but it's, it's, I think it's hard on people because there's not a lot of doctors that, that believe, believe in, in that. Yeah. So you, if you even bring it up, they're just like, no, 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 no. It's got to be something physical wrong with you. Uh-huh. Yeah, but do they make money off that? Yeah. Like they make money off meditations, they make money off pills, they make money off surgery, you yeah. know. Yeah, like so that's that's a tricky <laughs> it's a tricky thing to like get fixed or have someone help you because there's there's an actually I found a network of physicians and um psychiatrists who who do do it, but it's there's actually there is a guy in Columbus who does it who I've worked with. Um but like there's states that don't have a guy. Yeah. Like f- anyone who will like you, you have to like jump on Zoom calls and stuff. So yeah, they don't want they don't teach us stuff in college when you you're going to be a doctor. It's, it's very hard to monetize too. So like anytime you can't monetize something, when there's <laughs> no money there, there's not a lot of studies there. There's not a lot of research because all the research and studies in in the pharmaceutical industry are going to be put behind uh, a pill that people want to. Oh, make yeah. billions of dollars off yeah. of that's just how how you know entrepreneurialism and all that works so mm-hmm. um we could go down some rabbit holes i want to keep going <laughs> yeah. here and uh <laughs> get back to um so i remember helping you like when you fir- we first got into this gym a little over a year ago when you were you were starting to like really find your footing again like you're like okay you started to mix in a little bit of the barbell stuff and, and get and get going. Um, I want to kind of dive into how did this race get on you guys' radars? Who found it? And then how long did you guys train for it? And then um, I'll jump a little bit into uh, like the third story and, and, and training and everything. So um, how did you guys, when did you come across this race? When did you start training for it? Um, I would say like maybe four or five years ago, my uncle just was looking into obstacle course races and stuff like that. And he brought to us the Spartan race. So, um, basically there's a ton of different ones. There's like a three mile one, six mile one, like a half marathon one. And then the 30 mile one. And we, um, we started and we found one in Ohio. So we did the 13 mile one first and I mean, that was, that was very hard just because we'd never done anything like it. We didn't oh know gosh, yeah. what the obstacles were going to be like. And then kind of fast forward a little bit, we had done the other ones and we were like, all right, we got to do the ultra, the, the long one. So how many all together have you guys, had you guys done before this one? Um, I think I have done maybe five okay. before that one. Yeah. Cool. Um, but we did, we did a separate one that was also 30 miles that was in North Carolina but then um, my uncle was talking how this one was supposed to be the hardest one. In a, the one in Killington. Yeah, the one in Killington, Vermont, was supposed to be the hardest one because of the incline or whatever. It's thir- so it's 30 miles. It's around 30, 30 around, 31, okay. 29, somewhere like that. So yeah. it's over it's over the distance of a marathon with how many obstacles total in it? Usually around like 60. 60 uh, obstacles and a ton of like incline and yeah and that's kind of variable based on the um course itself so like some are at like farms some are at um ski resorts stuff like that gotcha gotcha so this is a race that just ballparking it this is like the like an iron man triathlon length race correct um like like in the total time it's going to take um, most, most likely. Yeah. How long does it take? Like the average? That, that, that that, that, that's, that's probably a wide range, but it, like, yeah. Yeah. It's a wide range. I know, um, this last one, it took me about 13 and a half hours, but, um. It sounds like an Ironman. I don't know yeah. triathlons, but that sounds about like an Ironman. Yeah. yeah it yeah, sounds yeah, like, yeah. I couldn't tell yeah. you the exact yeah. average times okay. for an Ironman, but, yeah. um, but like. When I did the ultra in North Carolina, it was only eight hours and fifteen minutes. So it's gotcha. really dependent it's a way on the course. Yeah, it's a, it's really dependent on the um, course itself. Gotcha, and that's why I saw you guys in here training. Like Mike 
for like I'd never seen anyone do this. He would start particularly like our gym. You know, we do a lot of like these sled drag and and um, kind of burden style workouts in the summer. We really like to do those. And then Mike would take every class from five thirty a.m. Uh, 5 30 6 30 8 30 9 30 and then the noon and then do um incline walking and jogging and running and things like that between it so he would fill up that full shift that dan works in the morning um with one long epic training session to prepare his body to go you know that's not even 13 hours so you know that's like more of like a eight hour enduro type thing so um I'd never seen anyone do that before. I was just like, that's what piqued my interest into like getting you guys on it. And so <clears throat> when did you guys start training for this race? Um, to be honest myself, I did not train anywhere near as hard as him. Yep. Um, a little bit younger, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, the thing is in the past, I trained a lot for running. So I've always yeah. known I've always kept my cardio up. I always know I can do these endurance runs. So I would say I overall started training probably, I honestly couldn't tell you for sure, maybe three months before, but it was like a couple runs here and there. I, like a, two weeks before I did a 20 mile run to just almost, not even for the physical component, just to mentally be like, okay, I'm good, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, just, yeah, but. So, and what is your exercise history? Like, I, you, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. like, so do you have background, you played sports? Yeah, so in high school, I played football and baseball, um, and then that was really just a lot of strength training with lifting, um, and then when I got to college, I kind of was like, you know, I was the typical college kid, I was like, okay, I want to lean down, get a six-pack, stuff like that, um, so I was just doing a lot of, like, hit cardio, still lifting a lot, and just running, so I kind of built up that cardio base a lot, and then, um, a little over two years ago, I started my personal training business, and then I've just kind of focused on a lot of different stuff, like bulking up, lifting a lot of heavy weights, and then continuing my running as well. And then, like you said, getting into CrossFit like about three months ago. Yeah, so <clears throat> for those of you guys who, who don't know, uh, Mike, the third here, he's a very impressive athlete. I mean, he's only been doing this for for three months or so. I just remember walking in, we're building up to like a a heavy 10 on, on a back squat. And he very casually, you know, back squatted 315, just bouncing out of the hole 10 times and then sort of just laid it up and and was like, okay, now I'm ready for the workout. And and it didn't seem to tax him at all. And, you know, he definitely could have, we could have slid, you know, some more weight on that bar and and he would have been fine with it. Um, so he's really strong, really explosive. Um, and can go for a long time. So it's he's like an example of what we're looking for in like a, a prototypical CrossFit athlete. So someone who's going to be able to, you know, lift heavy weights, go long distances, and then do everything in between. And so I thought it was such a cool thing. Like he's maintained this high strength level while training for a race that, you know, took over 12 hours to do. Um, now, I know you guys ran into... Like not everything goes as planned when, when we're, when we're getting into these, these type of, uh, events and, and I've had things like this happen to me, um, before. So what happened the, you know, the week leading into the race? So I, I was thinking back, about, it was like the Wednesday. So it would have been like 10 days, nine or 10 days before the race. Uh, I woke up and had that, I, we were talking about before I woke up and had like that feeling in your throat, like. Hmm. This feels like something, but it's probably nothing. And then Thursday, I woke up full blown, sore throat, coughing and sneezing. And Friday was really bad. And Saturday was really bad. And so I'm at Saturday and I'm thinking, all right, so I got one week, you know, because I've been doing, I, I trained longer than he did. I started training like three or four months. So I'm thinking, I've been training for three or four months for this. This is not good. It's, I'm, I'm, sick. It's one week till the race and all the bad thoughts go through your head, like in my, is this a sign that I'm not supposed to do it? Or am I going to be sick while I'm out there? Or am I going to get everybody else sick now? So uh, Sunday morning I woke up 
And I felt like, okay, may, I feel like I'm a little bit better. And so I'm maybe on the way to recovery. And then we took it. We were big Browns fans. So we took the trip to Cleveland. And then so, you know, it, it wasn't supposed to rain. And then it rained all the whole game. And I'm screaming and yelling. And so that was just the wrong thing to do. So then it just like set me back even more. So then I was sick a whole, the whole week leading up to the race. And it was just like that feeling of dread, like, you know, this is not good. I, I don't really even, I'm not even sure if I'm prepared. Cause I, like I said, I trained for three or four months, but they say you should train way longer, especially when you're older than he is. And so I was really, you know, anxious about that. Am I going to be super sick? And, and then of course they got sick too. So we had four of us. It was me and Michael and my son, Mitchell, and my nephew. And Michael and Mitchell were sick uh, also. I, get, I must have given it to them. They were sick that week. And so all, all four of us hopped in the car to leave on Thursday for the race on Saturday. All four of us, you know, hacking and sneezing and sore throats. And it's just kind of that, for me anyways, that quiet feeling of, oh, God, <laughs> what are we doing? This is such a bad idea. You know, and people are like, you're talking to them, people are going, are you, you're going to still go, right? And we're like, I'm like, yeah, we're going to go. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's probably a good idea. And you can see in their mind, like, you're not real smart or whatever, you know. And so, but yeah, we went and we were sick and, but got through it and still here. And Michael finished. <laughs> yeah, so he was able to, he was able to finish the race and, and you got through how, how much of it? I got through, I made it to, you have to make the, the cutoff, they have a cutoff, um, they call it halfway, but it's not halfway, because yep. it's really, the uh, ultra at Killington is two beasts, two beasts, which is 13 miles, yep. but the first part you do the beast, and then you do the ultra loop, which this one was four more miles, so I made it through that, so 17 miles, got to the halfway point, but I missed the cutoff by 45 minutes or so. Um, so I it's just, just a cutoff time. Cutoff yeah. time. So you have to yeah. be in the. You have to be at your area where you, you got your lunch, your stuff to 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 re. You know your your bin, your 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 halfway bin. You have to be there by two thirty. So I got there at like three fifteen. Could you tell that you were going to miss it? Like uh, oh, when did you know? When I got to about two o'clock, up until about two o'clock, I thought I still had a chance. Um, but once it hit about two o'clock, and I could just tell I had nothing left, and I knew I wasn't gonna make it you know um but I'm I'm I'm, I'm super glad I did it because and I'm the training I had to do it because I I, I did not want to go out there and embarrass myself and I I knew I had started training way late so um but yeah so it was still being you know. sick like that and for you to what what I think you know in your head like hey maybe it didn't go perfect but I can see this bigger picture like mm -hmm. I just remember where you were before your hip replacements. you you know, it was affecting your back. Mm -hmm. Like you were in here, you were, you were trying to move and still do things. And to see you train for eight straight hours and move well and do things that you weren't doing five years ago and, you know, five years older. And now you're, you're, what? And you're in your late 40s, right? You're I'll, I'll be 50 in uh, less than, a, I'll be 50 in November. Yeah. I mean, you're almost 50 years old and you're doing way more than you were at 45 with two fake hips. And you're, you know, you're, you're doing amazing athletic feats and you're killing it in class every day. I mean, you have to zoom out and appreciate like where you're at sometimes. And mm -hmm. like, you know, to be able to look back, like, yeah, maybe it didn't go perfect, but holy crap, you just, like, you train for something that's, like, one of the hardest, like, physical races. Like, that is, like, a, um, again, like doing an Ironman. Um, and, and you were able to get through, you know, do something for eight hours or, you know, that's yep. wild. Yeah. Um, that's very cool. I'm beyond impressed, even though it didn't go perfectly as planned. Like, you – what's also cool is you didn't pull out. Like, it's very easy to – get nervous or, or just to like, you know, like to go through with that when you're feeling less than, than, than good. Um, it's really, and, and just be like, I'm going to lean on this training. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when you get older too, it's scarier. Like it just is. Cause you, you, you're afraid your body's going to fail you. Yeah. Um, I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. Number one, do you regret the Browns game? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I, I honestly, if you could go back and do it again, would you still have gone to the game? Honestly, I've thought about that, and I probably <laughs> would have skipped it. I definitely, you know, I, I've thought about it a lot. I'm like, God, that was such a bad idea. And number two, um, did your birthday, did turning 50 motivate you to do this? No, I'll be 50 in November. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. the, the, your oh, yeah. birthday coming up. No, not really. I didn't think about that as much as I did that, that my uh, son Mitchell, when him and Michael signed up, because they were doing it all, when they signed up, and then Mitchell kept coming home, and he'd be like, Dad, you going to do it? You're going to do Killington? I'm like, no, I'm not even going to kill him. <laughs> and then I, I told somebody the other day, it's like, I don't know if you're like this, but when somebody asks you if you're going to do something, and in your back of your mind, you know you you could at least try, and yeah. that just kept bugging me. Yeah. And I'm like, so then I, signed, I told my wife, I'm like, okay, I'm going to find a place, and I'll go with them. So I found it a VRBO, and I'm like, okay, I'll set it up, and I'll go with them and support them. And then it was more like that. I just kept that voice kept going. Well, you could at least do it. Why don't you at least do it? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that motivated me. Neat. My son keep asking me, Dad, yeah. you gonna do Killington? You gonna do it? You gonna do it? That's really cool. Yeah. Shoot, That's me really and Kate. Neat. I think it was in 2016 we did one. It was called a Battle Frog. That that company went out of business, but it was a uh, what. 45 minute one, maybe an it, hour. It, it, it ended an up hour. being like, a, I think close to an hour and a half. But what I was thinking about was half, how yeah. my nervous system was just shot to shit. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, I felt like scared the whole time. Like for, I mean, how did you feel after you guys were done? Like, did you, did it feel like it took you days to like kind of calm down and feel like you're not going to die? <laughs> um, yeah, I would say so. My, the worst part of it was the decline parts of the hills were just That's so cool. much pressure on your knees that by the time I finished, I was, I was like limping the entire, I was limping the entire last 10 miles or so. But, um, like, yeah, I'm still recovering. Like I was just telling him my quads are still very, very tight just from, you know, what we did, but. Yeah, and how long ago was this now? Was it just last weekend or uh, was Saturday, it? Saturday. Yeah. Uh, okay. So six days ago. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And do people, were you running the whole time? No, the funny thing is, is most of the races you would run like the entire yeah. time, but the amount of incline, it was a 15,000 feet of elevation. So there was only about probably three to four miles that were actually flat ground that you could wow. run on. Um, now there's obviously people that are way better than me that were running the entire time, even though it's like 40 degree inclines, but for myself, um, you know, it's, you're hiking like aggressively yeah. hiking, basically. aggressively yeah. hiking. Yeah. Is a good, and it'll good save your body right. to do that too. If you can learn yeah. to walk fast, I'm sure mm -hmm. like just save the end, like some impact. Um, okay. Wow. So what was the hardest obstacle you ran into? Um, I mean, all the obstacles are pretty much the same throughout all the Spartan races, just okay. the course changes. So okay. I had done enough where I knew how to do almost every obstacle. Okay. It was really just the elevation that was the toughest okay. part. Yeah. Okay. And what are the obstacles? Because with the Battle Frog was all different. Like, we, you didn't really know what you're getting into. Well, we had never done one either. Yeah, there was people who did, like, got good. points and scored, and, like, there's yeah. a whole system to it. Mm -hmm. But we just, I mean, we did it one off and, yeah. and did it. Um, yeah, but yeah, they do. They have, there's rope climbs, there's, there's eight foot walls you have to jump over and then they have shorter walls too, but then they have monkey bars and then they have, you know, kind of monkey bars that turn and twist. So it makes it even harder. And then there's, um, pull yourself you, across like horizontally on a rope kind of, I'm trying to explain. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you're, yep, yep, yeah. yep. You're yeah. lying back. Uh, yeah. 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 Then they have water. You got to, uh, there's a sandbag carries, sandbag carries, um, uh, it was like 50 degrees there. So what they, at one point you go in the water and you got to go under a, a, a wall and there's mud and then all there's, um, the barbed wires, barbed wire crawl. The hardest one always at the incline, the, the one like Killington is the sandbag. Cause you carry the sandbag up and then you carry it down and then up mm -hmm. and down. And that's the one where like we saw him at the end when he was finishing and, uh, they always put it at the end and that's, you just see people just out. He, when he was finishing, I remember there was a guy out cold. He <laughs> dropped his sandbag. This is the very end. He dropped his sandbag. And I remember Michael just looking over at this guy and he was out. He was literally out cold. Like he and passed Michael, out. Like yeah. Unconscious, yeah. He, yeah. Had a, he had somebody with him, like, you know, and, and Michael's like, are you okay? And the dude's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's go. Come on, Michael. And Michael's just like looking at him like, I, 
you know, like he. This guy needs medical this attention. Needs medical attention. <laughs> what are we going to say? You know, but yeah, uh, that's that's a drastic, you know, example. Wow. But yeah. other there are still people like that's where people would drop like flies. Do they still have a uh, like a throw? Spear throw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen it on because they they'll um, they've had Spartan like the elite Spartan racers on TV. I don't know what the distance is for the like the pros who do it, but you know. That was definitely a big element, like, if people were, were really accurate with that. Because like, yeah. they'd be running in, and if they could just smoke it, like, real yeah. quick, I mean, that yeah. saved them a ton of time. Yeah, because if you miss the obstacle, then you have a, a loop, so you have to do, or not a loop, but you have a penalty lap, so you have to do more running. So if, you can, if you're good at the obstacles, then you run less, you know. And they used to do burpees. If you, yeah. if you miss the obstacle, you had to do, what, 30, 30 burpees. And then they took that out because it was too hard. I think they took it out because it was too hard to judge. The standard. The standard yeah, yeah. of people doing burpees. is just yep. So they just said, okay, we'll just add penalty run. Yeah, that's a, that's an easier way to do it. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I think they were doing burpees when I was watching it on TV. But, yeah. yeah. No, that's incredible. I, I think um, those Spartan races, that's something that I would like to, uh, to tackle at some point um, in my fitness adventure career. Um, those seem really cool. And it seems yeah. like something you can repetitively do and get better at it. And it's mm-hmm. like, it's a cool sport and, and you can really apply a lot of the things that you're doing at the, I know CrossFit when, just when we did that, that one race years ago, I was like, CrossFit is a great way to train, um, to be ready for these obstacles because a lot of them were climbing and like holding things. And we do so much pulling and pull ups and stuff and grip. I'm like, this is great. And we had to carry like, do like a heavy farmer's carry type thing. And I'm like, we do so much of this stuff. Um, it just takes a little tweaking to like mm-hmm. get it down for the race. So I think that's awesome. And were you the only one that made it uh, out, of, out of your group? Yeah. yeah. But the, the, um, the funny thing is, is when we went there, <laughs> you know what I'm about to mm. say when we were in the car ride there, cause the, the course usually only has like a 20% finish rate or something like that, which the other Spartan races are way higher. But um, when we were on the way, I was like, remember, guys, I'm I'm only going to be <laughs> disappointed if if you guys quit. I'm not going to be disappointed if you uh, fail. If you fail. And they were, I mean, it was the first race in my life that I actually was like, I knew I wasn't going to quit, but thinking about quitting, you know, and that was definitely in the back of my head during the whole thing. Like when I was um, coming up on the halfway point, I was just hoping that there was more until that, so I might not make the cutoff. But then, you know, you get there and you're it's all mental, honestly. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Once your once your mental is good, then you can you can do triple what you ever think you yeah. can. I had that in my head the whole the <laughs> most of the fifty percent of the time, his his voice. Not gonna be disappointed if you fail. Just if you quit. <laughs> <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> What time yeah. did you guys start that then? It was like 6.30. 6, 6, 30. 6, 30 a.m. Yeah. So then you finish at like 7.30 p.m.? Uh, yeah, he would, he would 8. 8, yeah. God. So did you just, I mean, did you just sleep a ton that night? How did you feel? Oh, uh, yeah, I went to bed like 7. You said you couldn't sleep before. very good, though. Well, no, I slept I slept the fine. Night, I, um, the night of, I mean, afterwards, you said you couldn't sleep very good. Oh, yeah, afterwards, like I was so tired, but my body hurt so bad that I... I only got like five hours of sleep the oh, night yeah. after. You're but. you're you're adrenalized too from like just you have to keep yeah. firing yourself up and like it's hard to. I, I remember um, even after we just did the, uh, it, it wasn't a, a hard enduring event, but I had a, the boxing match last year. I just laid in bed and just vibrated yeah. like yeah. all night. Your I was just like yeah, for yeah. So long. just like I, I didn't sleep. I just like got up like okay, time to go on with the day. Yeah. I'm like yeah. oh no. You think you could relax, but. Yeah. How did no. you fuel for that? <laughs> um, we ate so much food the day before. Yeah. Did you just kind of like. Oh, the whole day. Yeah. Because we slept in the day before. So we were only, I mean, I was only awake the day before for probably like nine hours or so. But we fit in as many calories as we could. Gotcha. And then during the race, I mean, I probably ate over 7,000 calories just through Do gels. they have stations too? Or yeah, no, just they do. But it's more stations. reliant on. um you bringing yeah. food in like a fanny pack or a yeah. camelback or something like they that. I'm just thinking it's going to get food, well, yeah. a banana station at one I didn't point. see that. 
I, I, it must have been on the second that, half. Well, it was the worst the banana. I, I couldn't even <laughs> They're bite it. They're not going to waste their money on yeah. it. <laughs> no bananas. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, like, you're in water. Like, all, all your foods probably get nasty. I mean, you have to keep, like... Like stuff like like gels that's yeah. like not gonna get anything in my like, oh. Yeah. I don't know. Good Peanut luck trying to talk me into that. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> I know it's way. Those gels like, taste so bad after so many. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're just like chalk. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Well, guys, I, I really appreciate you doing this, and I just think it's such a cool story, and and it's fun to watch you guys continue to just train together and and be like. I want to see more of this, like in the gym, like dads and sons training in here. It's just, it's, it's awesome. And every time I walk in here, like first thing and see you guys train together, it just puts a smile on my face. But um, yeah, just for time's sake, we'll wrap it up right here. And I appreciate you guys coming on. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.